Hello again everyone, and today I'm testing out a brand new lens from Venus Optics. It's an incredibly wide angle, rectilinear lens for full frame mirrorless cameras. They're 11mm f4.5, it's manual focus only. It'll be available for Sony E-mount, Leica M-mount, Nikon Z-mount, and also L-mount cameras. And the first 100 orders will get a free 100mm magnetic filter holder, apparently, and it'll be 700 US dollars. I'd like to thank Venus Optics for sending me a sample of this lens for testing for a couple of weeks, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. Its concept is simple enough. There are other camera lenses out there with such an ultra extreme wide angle, although not many. This lens manages to offer you those ridiculously wide angle images as wide as 126 degrees while being very small, light and compact. And that's really quite useful for landscape photographers who can just throw it in their bag without being weighed down by carrying too much equipment with them. After all, while its pictures are incredibly dramatic, a lens this wide is actually not very easy to use, so you won't be using it all the time. In order to keep the lens small and light, Lauer chose to keep its maximum aperture down to only f4.5, so shooting with it in darker places will require you to use high ISO levels on your camera. Let's look at the lens in question. As I said, it's small and light, but the build quality feels very impressive, solid and metallic throughout. It weighs only 250 grams. The focus ring turns quite far and very smoothly, even having a focus tab on the bottom to make it feel a bit more tactile. You can remove that with a little screwdriver though, if you want to. Next comes an aperture ring. The f-stop markings are spaced out pretty unevenly here, but you do get a slight click at each stop to help you know where you are when you're holding your camera. The f16 marking there is just a little dot. Around the front of the lens is an understandably narrow metallic hood that's fixed in place. The good news about the lens is that the front of it accepts 62mm filters, which is astonishing for a lens with such an incredibly wide angle. The not so good news is that it's pretty fiddly to get them on there, particularly a polarising filter, and all but the narrowest filters will cause some strong vignetting. You'll want the thinnest filter you can possibly find, and just the one of them too. The lens comes with a slide-on cap which fits in place snugly. Overall, the lens is simple and built to a high standard, but I do wish the hood was designed a bit differently to make it easier to get those filters on and off. Anyway, image quality. I've got a Sony E-mount version here, so I'm going to start by testing it on a Sony A7R II with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor. Straight from f4.5, in the middle of the image, we see excellent sharpness and contrast. The image corners are not so great. There is some detail being captured there, but those corners are pretty dark and ghostly, with some colour fringing. At f5.6, they look about the same. At f8, they display just a little more contrast, but even if you stop down to f11, there's still no real improvement. So, with the lens, we can take away two key facts. Firstly, it's brilliantly sharp throughout most of the middle region of your image, but the corners are very dull. You will at least want to brighten them up by correcting that very strong vignetting. Well, let's see how well the lens works on an APS-C camera now, my 24 megapixel Sony A5100. Its field of view is the full frame equivalent of 16.5mm, so it's still an ultra wide angle lens on APS-C cameras too. At f4.5, we continue to see absolutely awesome resolution in the middle of the image. The further good news is that the APS-C sweet spot effect does come into play here, and the image corners now look very sharp, although colour fringing is still quite noticeable. f5.6 looks just a tiny bit sharper, and the lens stays this sharp down to f11. So, on an APS-C camera, apart from that colour fringing, it really is a very good performance. Let's see now about distortion and vignetting. As you'll have already noticed in those earlier test pictures, the lens suffers from terribly strong vignetting at all apertures. You will need to correct that vignetting in editing. The distortion characteristic is a little more complicated though. 
If you focus very closely to your subject, then we see some fairly strong barrel distortion emerging here. However, if you focus to infinity, then it straightens out rather, although we still see quite a wavy sub-frequency here. Oh, and here's F16, just in case you didn't believe me about that vignetting, so it's quite a crazy performance for vignetting and distortion here. Next, close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to 19 centimeters. The good news is that close-up image quality remains nice and sharp, so no real problems here. Now, let's see how the lens works against bright light. Generally, it's an averagely good performance, with not too much in the way of flaring, although at particular angles, some glaring does make itself known, as you can see. Let's take a look at coma levels now. At the maximum aperture of f4.5, the image corners still look a little soft, but we don't see too much in terms of coma smearing when bright lights are in the picture. If you want to see some very impressive sun stars, by the way, then just stop down to f5.6 and they pop up right away, and the effect they give with brighter lights, such as these, gets very dramatic. And finally, bokeh. It's almost impossible to get out of focus backgrounds with this lens due to its extremely wide angle and dark maximum aperture. When you do, they're a tiny bit busy looking, but really, it's a mood point. So then, overall, it is a fun lens to use, despite its eclectic mixture of features and flaws. It's lovely and small, it gets extremely dramatic images, it can use front filters, well, if they're slim enough, and it's sharp with excellent contrast in the middle of your images, which has the side effect of giving excellent image quality on an APS-C camera. Its biggest flaw is obvious though, corner image quality on a high-resolution full-frame camera, where we see softness, plenty of darkness, and some colour fringing. If you're willing to correct your images in post, and get rid of some of that, then you will end up with acceptable results and images which look really dramatic, just don't expect images which are razor sharp from corner to corner here.